Yeah, probably we are live already. Live streamed. Yeah. I should probably stream. I wonder if I can stream it from my from my yeah, uh you can you just have to share it. You have yeah. to go and share it. It worked. Oh my god, people, you won't believe what you said. <laughs> <laughs> do you stream on Facebook? How do I share it? Do I have to copy the streaming link or do you stream on Facebook? Usually there's a oh I go to I go to um I go to your feed and I share it from your feed, don't I? That's exactly how we're gonna do it. Okay, great, 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 great. Give me two ticks while I do exactly that. Uh, you get to have like 10 minutes for your stuff now that I took like 25 for my stuff. Ah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the modern age. Oh, okay. You just, I have just got the slow. Yeah, I'll let you know when we're streaming. <clears throat> Svenja, yeah. great. So happy to be here. And I can't see your stream. It's now live. Great. Everything share. Share. <laughs> share now. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone on my feed. You've been watching us for two minutes already. Ah, we tried to do this through Facebook Live and it did not work. Surprise, surprise, it did not work. So we're here now. Yeah. I'm going to start my... Sorry. Yeah, I'm stoked to be here. So good to see you, Svenja. <laughs> we were already yeah. happy a half an hour ago. We're still happy. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the podcast of Living and Dying. Uh, you know that I only invite people that I really love, that I think are adding to this world, being a better place. And that's why I invited Russell. And, um, you know, we chose the uh, very humble um, title. What did we say? Money, sex and death? Money, money sex and death. That's yeah. right. Sex, money, and death. You came up with the title, and I'm going to ask you in a second how you did come up with that. But can you just sure. tell people like who you are? Yeah. Who am I? Great question. So, well, what I do is I'm a hypnotherapist. Uh, who I am is a G. I'll give you a very quick synopsis of how I managed. I got here, Svenja. Is um. Many, many years ago, I was, um, I ran a college of natural therapies. I studied everything under the sun in the field of personal development. And I came to a point where I felt like there was a lot of things missing. You know, if you look at all the people who teach the workshops today, they're like, I see so many relationship coaches in struggling relationships. I see many, um, law of attraction coaches who are still trying to pay the rent. I see a lot of emotional wisdom coaches who are kind of like not where I wanted to be. And I was like, I wanted to find out what really works and what works across culturally, what works independent of whether I believe in angels or chakras or ascended masters or crystals and how I can apply that to myself. And so I've come to this point now about 20 years later, having let go of the whole personal development industry, challenged everything I knew about everything. And now I'm just returning back to the field of like offering what I know and how I do it with this deeper understanding of, of the heart, of the psyche, of trauma, of what it means to live your best life and finding some answers to questions like why does shit still keep happening or why can't I just be happy or does it does my childhood really affect what's going on why can't I have a good relationship I found a few answers to these questions which <laughs> I know right which seem to dovetail with real life and don't require you to be humming affirmations or holding the right crystal or feeling like there's something intrinsically wrong with you because your relationship didn't, didn't work out or because you can't create the money you'd like, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of a long way of saying, this is how I got to the place where I'm at. And probably the next time we do this podcast interview, uh, soon you'll have a whole bunch of new things and say, all that shit is garbage. 
but let's see what happens this time. But but yeah. I mean, what's the fun, like when you're enlightened as hell and, and you don't have any attachment to this world, like where's the fun? I think that's I think that's a really good point, Senya. It's like I have nothing to prove. I'm not attached to being right anymore. Mm. And so I hold on to these principles, which I'm happy to share at some point, very loosely and with the understanding that at some point in the future, I'm probably going to outgrow them or they will teach me something new. And um, so I hold on to things very lightly now, but still with a lot of reverence. And I think it's a really good point that, yeah, you just brought up then. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like to say to my my people, my crowd, that you can choose like this, like basically two paths you can go. You can have the, you know, end boss goal of being like non, non-attachment, non you just be in peace, not having the waves through your life, but just go like this if that's your goal. Perfect. Go for it. My goal is more the I want to fucking enjoy this life. Like, give me the highs, right. give me the lows. I just want to understand what's happening so I don't get like angry okay. or frustrated too much. But I want to enjoy, and I think that's what like the body shows you, right? What you're made, what you're made for. It just brings you into situations by sicknesses, by creating uh, relationships, creating, um, yeah, abundance yeah. or not. <laughs> I think yep. more usually it, it does by not creating you the, uh, abundance to show you like, where are the things that you're supposed to not master, but maybe enjoy them. Yes, yep, that's, I mean, so two, I'm gonna unpack a few things there. First of all, this, when you said at the very start, this desire to be, kind of even in a place of harmony. It's kind of like the spiritual ideal, right? It's kind of Buddha's sense of non-attachment. It's what you imagine when you think I'm going to go and meditate and be like a monk for the rest of my life. It's, and I tell you what, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And here's why. There's a, because there's a couple of major conflicts which are baked into humans, okay? We're very, we're very poorly designed from one point of view. But we definitely have this desire, and I totally get it, to have peace and have inner harmony. And you should absolutely, by all means, cultivate as many strategies as you can to create that inner peace. Um, and it's super necessary. Um, but the challenge is that a lot of spiritual people want to go to that place and stay in that place and in doing so, there's a very, it's very clear to me that they're just bypassing all of life and trying to bypass all the things that they don't like about life, which are challenging. So two things. When I sat with Muji uh, a couple of years ago in Rishikesh, okay, because, you know, I'm trying to get stamps in my hippie passport as well. It was very clear to me that the people who were seeking enlightenment the hardest were the ones that were at least able to deal with their life, right? And they're like, oh my God, Muji saved me because I want to be enlightened because I can't deal with this stuff. Now, on top of that, Senya, baked into our DNA is the dopamine system, okay? And the dopamine system wants us to explore, to go out into the world and create, and to basically go to places that we've never been before, and it rewards us. When we learn something, we get dopamine. When we have an enjoyable experience, we have dopamine. And so we are wired to expand and grow. We get rewarded for that. But we also get rewarded for having peace and connection. And these two systems will constantly conflict in your life. Because what happens? What happens when everything's beautiful and peaceful and calm, you get bored and you start creating drama. What happens when everything is way too exciting and unpredictable and you're having to learn, learn, learn all the time? You're like, stop it. I just want to get off and go back and meditate. These two systems, and if we want to get really spiritual, this is the foundation of duality, okay? These two opposing forces which are 
always pushing and pulling inside us. And there's a couple more that operate within relationships and with other things, but it's kind of sex and death, right? The two things. You want sex. You want the enjoyment. You go out of your way to pursue a relationship. And yet death is kind of lurking there as the ultimate place to relax where there's nothing to do, where there's no one to be and simply be pure awareness. And so we get caught between these two poles. Absolutely, 100%. I had to try it. I have to try everything because I'm a profile three in human design. Everybody who knows, you know, I have to, yes. I have to, I have to do it through trial and error. I have to try it. I won't know if I like it or not, if I don't do it. So I had to try this. <laughs> and it's yep. exactly <laughs> this. I have these, I have these thoughts in my head, you know, when things get stressy, like you're in the middle of a launch, everything's just, you know, dragging yeah. and, you, you know, us women, I mean, we're psych cyclical beings, right? So yeah, that's right. launches are cycles for us. It's not this, it's this. So you start with an offer and you go into the energy of your launch. And then, you know, the moment comes when, you, when you're like, when you're, oh, everything is like, the energy's gone. It's like, you're, you're in a winter coming and saying, okay, what's happening now? And that's the moment where I'm always like, oh my God, I wish I could just have an episode and lie in hospital for three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, oh my God, yes, what did totally. I do? Like, did I just manifest my kidneys failing again? Did I just manifest? Like, I want to be, what just happened in my head? It's like one solution because the mind is so, I, I love the mind because it just gives you solutions. It doesn't judge like whether that's, a reasonable solution or not mm -hmm. says, yeah. you could try that like that worked in the past <laughs> yeah like, yeah exactly no, my shadow yeah yeah so the mind exactly the mind loves solutions it loves to categorize and label there's a few okay so here's a couple of other functions of the mind which will also kind of help unravel this great big mess that we kind of find ourselves in as human beings so the mind loves, and its job, it has a couple of jobs, which it's really good at, right? It needs to label, categorize, um, distinguish in terms of value and hierarchy. It's kind of a dirty word these days, but hierarchy. And then forget, okay? So, for example, you know that a chair is something to sit on and... When you sit on it, it's going to hold you up. And then forever after, you can forget about what a chair does and whether it's going to work because you've seen that pattern enough times. You get a big surprise when you sit on the chair and it tips over because you're not expecting that, right? But and up until that point, you've forgotten about it. Same thing with something like driving, for example. There's a whole complex set of, uh, instructions that we need to do to go through and drive but you've mastered that it's become a pattern and now it's it's disappeared imagine if when you went to the shops you had to learn to drive all over again which is kind of like the spiritual ideal of being present which is like everything is new you'd never get anything done okay because you'd forever be learning so our brain takes in things makes it unconscious. The actual job of our brain is to make things unconscious. Where we get in trouble is when something in the past, like a trauma occurs and we, we create that response and we repeat that response so that it becomes ingrained and then we never go back and revise it, okay? And that's when a trauma becomes a pattern in our neurology and I'm happy to talk about this later, but we need to be able to go into the code of our unconscious mind to rewind this trauma. And this is why I'm very fond of saying, understanding your patterns won't solve them. Okay. It's like, it's like you've written out something, you've written chair and said, here's a chair. And your unconscious mind is like, no, 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 no. A chair is a whole different experience or driving. This is kind of the difference between the conscious mind, which creates the label of 
you know, when I was young, my dad did this, my, my mother didn't do this. And now I'm like this, and now I want to be like this versus going into the code of the unconscious mind. And so then if I loop back to your talking about doing a launch and, oh, now I'm in my feminine winter. What do we, what do we do then? There's a couple of ways we can kind of go into our masculine and push through and penetrate it and just do the launch anyway yeah. uh, and yeah. kind of override our physiology. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, men have this experience too. Uh, we're kind of more culturally uh, instilled to kind of push through mm-hmm. or we can dive into the unconscious. We can dive into the feeling space and metabolize and welcome what is happening in there and bring this winter, bring this part on board with what we're doing. And that's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And that's so beautiful because that's not the only thing that's going to happen, right? Pushing through with push, pushing <laughs> through comes like a whole other bunch of toxic masculine stuff, like micromanaging, checking up how many people registered. What else do I need to do, 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 do. So people, so like more people register of like my last, my last launch was like I've had uh, I think a weekend I had like 90 registrations and I was like oh. <laughs> I've had 400 last time universe okay. what's okay, happening I was like oh so, okay. naming and oh checking and what do I need to do so it's like a, a, a downward spiral right so yeah what yeah. I need to do embrace what is like embrace what's happening and be you know what I found so logical and yet nobody's doing it it's like acknowledging what's there we always have yeah. to like hold your frequency like you're not gonna sell if you're if you're going down and 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 you're not holding your energy like the bypassing stuff so hold up your energy and and try to push through and like the opposite is to just see what's happening in me. Like, can I, can I bring, Sophie said something so beautiful the other day. She said, can I bring my heartbreak to my launch? Like, can I bring my low energy to my launch? And I was like, fuck yeah, that's exactly what I needed. (laughs) These words were like, it's going down like, like cosmic honey, you know, just dripping into and something's changing. And then yeah. the magic is happening. When you stop fighting against everything that's there and stop stop fighting to you. Whenever somebody said, you just said, uh, and live your best version, I'm like, I who says I have to live my best version? Like, right. maybe, maybe, maybe I just want to enjoy my messy me. I've been my best version for 30 years. Maybe the next yeah. three years, I'm just going to do my shadow me and see what's happening. Like, is everything going to explode? Are my dogs going to starve? Like, if I don't, if I don't micromanage that, I need to buy food today. So I have some next week. What's happening if I don't yeah. make myself another person and instead embrace everything I am? I, I love that, Sonia. I love that. Even that line, what happens if I don't make myself into another person? Oh. That's kind of, it's just, and I mean, so many of us have done it, have tried to fit ourselves into boxes and, and contort ourselves. And again, this, and, and look, on that note, I also want to kind of honour that there's a wisdom behind that contortion as well. A lot of this, a lot of the work that I do is about having such deep, deep compassion both for yourself now and to not betray your former self. I love this words by Jordan Peterson, you know, another controversial figure, but he had these beautiful words to say when someone asked him, would you have done anything, anything different reflecting on your life? And he thought about it and he said, you know, I, I'm not going to betray my former self. I'm not going to say that I would have done anything different. I'm going to back up what I did. And so here's another one of the fundamental challenges in our life is, and a launch is a great example where all of this stuff, all of the unconscious stuff plays out, right? We have this need for authenticity. You know, you're a great example of someone who is fiercely sovereign, who is revealing and putting herself out into the world and being very authentic okay and even in this kind of podcast you're kind of like revealing the struggles that you have on the way just like sophie is an example to us as well yeah 
beautiful, beautiful model for authenticity. And what happens if we go too far into being unique, special, and different? And Tony Robbins talks about this. We become a bit like Michael Jackson. We become so freakishly unique that nobody can relate to us. Okay. And in opposition to authenticity, there is a need for attachment, for attachment and belonging and finding a tribe and feeling connected and part of a community to other people. And so a big, big fear when people are starting to put themselves out to reveal their gifts is their mind leaps a thousand years into the future and goes, you're going to become so special or that people are going to reject you or else they're going to just going to reject you straight away. Better if you stay safe and you don't reveal yourself. Okay. And Dr. Gabor Mate talks a lot about this because he says, we sacrifice authenticity for attachment. And what that looks like practically is that we choose not to be ourselves. We choose not to express our boundaries. We choose not to, to do the thing that we really want in order to please the other, in order to be accepted, which is also really, really important. And so, again, not to betray our former selves for making these decisions, but to understand that these two forces are in opposition. And often belonging is a really good idea because when we're young, we need our parents' love to help develop that growing nervous system. When we were cavemen and women, we needed to be part of the tribe. That's how we survived and that's how we excelled as a species. And so for all of those people out there who are struggling with experiences like I'm a people pleaser or I can't set boundaries or I'm in a relationship, but I don't know how to leave or I'm in a job, but I'm scared to take the next step. There's nothing wrong with you. You're doing, in fact, there's an intelligence inside that is working for you and it wants to keep you safe and the the way to navigate through is can we bring these two parts together and find a way to navigate through and Ah, this is your this is your your uh a hypnotherapy voice so something inside me just directly goes to ah that's so beautiful like how the brain works ah sorry for interrupting (laughs) <laughs> that's the time. And I find it really important to share these because this is the foundation upon which our personalities are built and they're baked in. And what happens is as we go, we grow up and we get acculturated, as we 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 get we get kind of we we internalize the the values of our culture. And spirituality is a culture, right? It's it, it has values which say you're unique and special and you have a beautiful gift and, you, you know, you should be grateful for, you know, practice gratitude and your thoughts become things in the real world. And while these are very good teachings, they, they come up against reality, right? Yeah. You know, just because I think something doesn't mean it's going to happen all the time you know, and what thoughts do I need to be thinking? And oh, no, yeah. I thought a bad thought about someone. Does that mean I'm broken or I'm not in the vortex or I'm out of alignment? There's something wrong with me. Am I going to get punished? No, you're just being very, very human. And these teachings aren't complete. They're just so very incomplete and they can cause a lot of havoc for people. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. and I've gone down that road really deeply as well, and and noticed and had to repair the havoc in me, which came when I thought, well, I'm going to take 100 percent responsibility for absolutely everything, or I'm only going to think positive thoughts, um, and then enjoy the rewards of the things that I manifest. And you will quite, <laughs> quite turn out the way they wrote about it in the books. Um, and beyond that, in my observations of people all over the world, from Australia to Africa to the Middle East to America, um, you know, from, from tents in Saudi Arabia to, you know, psychedelic meetings in California and everything in between, I don't see very many people who are 
constantly living that kind of high vibration, enlightened, enlightened kind of lifestyle. And I bet even people like Eckhart Tolle have bad days. Um, oh, and don't have sex, by the way. I just found so- that out recently. He doesn't. Like for, doesn't. for a decade, not. Like, yeah, th- that's what happens when you're not attached. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of not much fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. ultimately, you know, you do you. Do you with your kindest blessings upon yourself and can we help each other along the way? It seems just oh. so deeply vital. Ah, uh, yeah. I wrote down like a hundred things. Um, <laughs> I, I want to go into that because I've, I've, I do have so many clients always coming up, coming up with the, I know everybody thinks they are wrong, but something's really wrong with me. Like everybody thinks that, and, and I love everybody's fine, but I'm not like something is really wrong with me. And mm. I love the, the first thing I do is like giving them the puzzle piece of everything that's in your shadow has been born out of love. Like it's been either you trying to love someone, trying to give your love and it wasn't received or you tried to be loved and you Mm. didn't succeed. And everything that comes out of there, like all the patterns, all the, um, all the things that you decided you're going to do in the future or you won't do in the future come out of this very innocent part of you. So for me, it's so important that people realize that everybody is innocent and just a product out of the experiences you made, the way you brought up your socialization, things like that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And it's so, this is what I've seen very viscerally and in real time because it's one thing what you're saying there is a, is a piece of wisdom you know your shadows are born of love you know and that piece of wisdom is something that i have seen and witnessed and been a part of over and over and over again and we've we've done it together in our sessions as well that a, a person comes in and they are in their mind analyzing and assessing something and making it wrong a lot of people say to me i wish this feeling wasn't there or i need to get rid of my money blocks or my love blocks or, yeah, but I do. <laughs> yeah exactly that's what they want and, and but i think what we what i'm certainly recognizing and pointing to as you said is like these shadows come from a place of love And as soon as we drop down below the surface of of our judgment of that, the heart starts to reveal itself naturally. And the person gets a visceral experience of the love that you're talking about, that all shadows come from love. And I've, I've not seen this, I've not seen anybody who doesn't have this inner core of wisdom and kindness and love which sits just beneath their shadows and this i mean this is just like the juice of of everything that i've kind of been looking for and wanting to wanting to share um very practically with the world both through what i do with clients and i'll be teaching this in the future because you don't need to believe in crystals or unicorns or chakras or ascended masters but you can yeah, as well yeah. If yeah. it makes you happy, like if you're in a child, then, exactly, I exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can be Christian, you can be Muslim, you can be Jewish, you can be Jane, whatever you want. But there's something which I'm tracking, which is endemic to all of us, and you can call it what you will. But one of the trademarks of going deeper into the unconscious mind is that words start to drop away. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, probably about the right time for Rumi's quote, which I'm so fond of, where he says, <laughs> bring in a bit of Rumi. He says, out beyond notions of right doing and wrong doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Mm-hmm. And so as we move beyond judgments of this is right and this is wrong, he says, there's a field. And then he says, he doesn't say go there by yourself. He says, I'll meet you there. Oh. And for for all the coaches and the facilitators and the people working with people, you are being roomy 
guiding people to this field where you are holding them in what Carl Rogers calls the field of unconditional love. Now, little aside, unconditional love was never meant to be something that we do all of our life. It was contextualized the client therapist relationship. It's very hard to unconditionally love everything. But let me go back. The next two lines in Rumi's poem are, and when the soul lies down in that deep grass, the world is too full for words. Mm. And as you sink into your heart, you will find that you lose words to describe what's going on, but it is very real. And in this place, that's where healing happens. That's where trauma is allowed to unwind itself. That's where, that's where your uniqueness, which you know is there, resides waiting to connect to you. Yeah. Ah, I've had this discussion yesterday where mm -hmm. somebody said, I, I just love to discuss things. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't because my my I'm right here kicks in and I've been working hard on that I'm right you need right. To, you need to you need to bow to my truth right because I'm right I found myself studying like all of those topics just to be able to know what's <laughs> right or wrong you know I'm a bit like I'm a bit in neuro I'm a bit in quantum physics I'm a bit like I can play the piano a bit I can you know I'm a bit in the Victorian age not more than a bit but you know I I kind of know everything <laughs> and it's like yes. yeah i'm just gonna drop like three or four keywords and you just know that i'm i know i know shit like yeah yeah, yeah. and the being right yeah. was such a big thing in my life that i'm like this was my biggest key for my peace that it's not right. about being right or wrong and that made sense like did i i've had carried the sentence for two years and it made sense after one and a half years this is how it. much this was anchored in my system being right means that you keep your position that people look up to you and they a won't get near you like no no fear of intimacy <laughs> they won't get near you they will respect you they will book you they will follow you things like that. So I, I found um, some pleasure in um, demasking myself in whatever mask comes up. And what she said about authenticity, absolutely true. I speak my heart and that's just a mask, right? That's just a role. Be authentic. People are going to love it. Give them your shadow things um, and they're going to jump onto your train. And it works. It works for me because I keep the position. It's uh -huh. you keep the position of being right. Yes. <laughs> and nobody, Just nobody, me. yeah, nobody can tell me that I'm wrong about myself, right? So this is like the ultimate weapon. <laughs> it's like and demasking myself and demasking and demasking and going deeper and deeper and deeper and finding myself to see uh having to remind myself that in the end, my shadows to come out of love is very hard, but you know, not judging myself for treating people through authenticity. You know, that's a whole new level of shadow work. And yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there. My goodness. Um, one thing I want to say is I think you've managed to marry. So part of the way through the challenges that we face as humans is to marry opposites and to be okay with paradox. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you were talking about this desire, let's call it of your ego without making that a dirty word, but the, the, the desire to be right. Okay. Because it gives you all of these other things. It gives you validation. It gives you control. People respond to it. Oh my God, we could do a whole thing about people do respond to someone who's confident and unwavering you know the shadow side of that is narcissism but we get drawn to 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 confidence and certainty because we kind of crave yeah. it you know the notion that the world is extremely uncertain creates a lot of nervous system dysregulation anyone can look out the window for the last who's looked out the window for the last 18 months has seen the amount of dysregulation that's happened so someone coming in with a clear 
clear directive yeah. is very attractive. I know the way. I exactly. Know, I know the best way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And for the person doing that, you are you are bypassing all the ways in which you actually don't know what you're doing or that your shadows come up, right? And I think what you're modeling and what we need more and more in the world is people who can both be very clear and directing, but also reveal and acknowledge their humanity. It's like, hey, sometimes I slip up. Sometimes I lose my temper. Sometimes I'm just making this shit up, but I'm determined to find the right way for all of us. I, in I, full, yeah, I right? even told it in my chart. In one of the gate, it says, and it's a fixed gate. I won't ever change it. Like I can't go from the shadow into the light. It says, you're making truth up to serve others and you're even selling it. <laughs> and I'm like, how do they know? <laughs> How do they know that I'm just selling my pony place to everyone like going for I found a way to be happy in life because it feels like making it up right I love you quoting all those like all those philosophers and 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 intelligent people and and scientists and I'm like I just have this like I just have my brain I just have what what's landing in my brain I'm not yeah. reading so much. I'm not, I'm doing, I do constantly, I'm, I'm constantly in mentoring. So I do courses, blah, blah, blah. But it's never yes. somebody else's truth that I mm. take, but it just comes from somewhere. And it just, it, it even happens in my containers during my lives. I plan to say something and I say something else. And I don't know where yeah, that yeah. Come, came from. And it's so hard not to stop myself, but to trust that this is exactly what needs to be said in the moments because people are just, you know, they, they just say, my mind just exploded by what you said. And I say, what did I just say? I don't know. And those are like such freaky moments and I'm earning my money and it secures my life. Like, poof. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but it's, it's beautiful. So what you're presencing there, I think is, I'm, I'm going to make it up. I think it was Socrates who said something like all... All learning is really remembering stuff. And, and yeah. you and I and anyone else out there who's, who's led a group or led a program or simply mentored somebody will have also had this experience exactly like you said of like maybe you planned what you were going to say, but then in the field with other people, something else dropped through, you know, which was beautiful and relevant and perfectly designed which you couldn't have done by yourself in isolation yeah. and yeah. so then here's the thing is like your students are a gift to you because they're allowing you to to create this clear channel and so we you know we just offer this gratitude to our students to our clients to the people who come to us because they're giving us the gift of our best self and and the connection it's like it's so beautiful it's it's the same as in human design it's so beautiful that we are all designed for connection that other people activate something in us and we can't activate ourselves so we it makes us exactly. as yep. independent strong women we are being made dependent because we're social beings on others who activate things in us that we can't live just by our own energy and that's that's exactly what these containers are for right that's like that's I only made I, I I go for like I only made 8k out of this launch and and somebody else says but you have like the juiciest container you're you're experiencing yourself in this whole new position of being a bit outside and letting the field do the work it's like you're not doing the work anymore you're not being drained through your container how much money is that worth and I go like okay you're so right but I still, you know if we get these this is the best job ever, right? Because right, you right. grow, you help people get happy or make make something out of their life that makes them happier. And and it's so good that we, like us coaches, you know, us coaches who don't have a shadow and who never fail in anything, <laughs> that we are being forced into the position of surrendering to what we're doing and saying I have no fucking clue what's happening here this is none of my uh, I'm not a professional in what I just said I don't know what I just said but it seems to be right so yeah yeah we're responding and and it keeps us it keeps you humble 
as well. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people go down the, the guru trap of thinking that the thing that comes through them is them and acting as if, you know, they really do know something greater than other people and they, they come toppling down. And I think, and I've seen it, it's, it's not, it's not fun when you can, when you can receive that energy from other people and then return it back to them, you know, that feedback loop becomes sustainable for both of you. And I want to comment on something you said around being dependent, you know, this image of the strong, independent woman while, you know, and I want to, I don't want to, to negate that teaching. That's a really good teaching, but it's a better teaching for people who are coming out of codependence and into their strength. And then it's a trap for women who are self-empowered because then you need to go back to a healthy dependence. And so these teachings, which get flooded around uh, need, need to be contextualized very carefully for one woman being a strong independent woman is absolutely that's a step you need to take honey for other women it's like no you need to now be able to let people in to be able to co-regulate with other people okay same for men but yeah it's uh understanding where the who the teaching is appropriate for and at what stage you are in your development is a whole other art form um and yeah I just had a container with a hundred women who got killed through this independent, mm-hmm. strong woman. Yeah, because it breaks your neck, right? I don't need anyone means, yeah, there's basically no space for anyone. And you're complaining about all the weak men that don't fit your standards, but like you're sitting with your ass on his throne. So where's the space? Like, he can't. I love that. Yes, you're yeah. sitting with your ass on his throne. Yeah, we'll sure. have your ass because you have, to ha- you have to sit on your throne as well, right? that's yes, not yes yeah it doesn't work so yeah ah yeah um i want to go to money i want to speak about okay. money i love speaking about money and we have it in the so we should like cover it i have a few tiny questions for you um how do you love money like in which ways do you show your love to money oh, what is i love money? You. Wait, wait 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 what is yeah. money for you that's an, an easier one probably but the third one is the juiciest one asking you what are you trying to put onto money? Like which of your patterns are you putting on money? Because I find it so interesting. We're going to treat money like we do our, we treat our partner. Right. So how do you treat mm-hmm. money for us? How do I treat money? I, well, I love having it. I love being able to make it and I love, I love, in fact, the reason I want to have it and make more of it is because I just love being generous and it's like, oh, I can put, you know, I was listening to a friend yesterday. He's a, he's a, anyway, he's been very successful. He's not so successful now. And I just listened to his story and walked out of the restaurant and just paid for his, his lunch. And I could do that with no further thought other than, this feels like a nice thing. This feels like a cool thing to do. Um, my friend wants to come to a festival in another state. I can just fly him there because I just want to see him happy. It just, money is a magnifier. If you're mean and stingy, having more money will make you meaner and stingier. And if you're kind and generous, having more money just allows you to be kinder and more generous. And I just love the ability that money has to to magnify these these enjoyable qualities in me that I already have so that's I, I just I just gives me such a kick to be able to do that with my money yeah so ah, generosity um, yeah and so, same with myself right to have the best things to buy the best things for myself also just freaking love that yeah to to be able to afford everything that's going to heal you right everything that you desire where we, we come back to desire as your north star right because if you think you want to have yes, it, yeah. yeah yeah and then comes the princess saying i should be able to afford this booking a 22k coaching no idea where the money's going to come from but i'm going to do it yeah um yep. <laughs> just yep. putting that in um uh-huh. yeah how, um how do you show your love to your money 
how do I show my love to my money? That's a, <laughs> I'm a little bit avoidant. I've got a little bit of an avoidant attachment totally. style when it comes to exactly, my money. Exactly what sometimes, I'm going to do. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, I just, I just know there's enough, so I'm not going to look too hard. Um, and it's so funny. Like I have a bookkeeper, I have a system, I have a spreadsheet I fill out every month and uh, I haven't, I haven't filled it out for two months. Wow. Um, but I do, I do have a sense of where I am. How do I, and the question was, how do I show my love for money? Oh, it's a, it's a good question. I, I think I'm still learning to appreciate it. I'm very much more in a sense of trusting that it comes in rather than trying to control it. Um, having said that, I am above a certain level of income, which meets all my survival needs. Um, and now I'm, uh, and now I'm in the place where I want to meet my creative and expressive needs. So just to kind of contextualize the phase where I am now, um, showing my, my love, from, I'm just kind of like, I don't do a song and a dance when it comes in, but I am kind of quietly like, yeah, I, I just got another client today and that feels really good. Yeah, I'm quietly, I'll do a little, a quiet little humble brag. Um, and it feels good. It just feels good. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's right. That's about right. That coming in. Good. Yeah. How so, does money love you? How does money love me? <clears throat> it, it, seems to continue coming in um and i i'm one of those people who always has enough and oh mm. how does money love money has also been a vicious lover to me because i've nearly gone bankrupt a couple of times as well and definitely was not feeling the love that said okay so that said in my deepest darkest hours mm. I yeah, still, I love what's going to come. <laughs> right. There was still a part of me. And, and you know, and I'm talking the, the, the point where you're about to sign a contract and something goes wrong and you're looking in the mirror in the bathroom going, my entire life and the next seven years is riding on this and I don't fucking know how it's going to work. And, you know, and I'm watching myself in the mirror going, it's and I had to get in touch with that place, which knew that it was going to be okay without any, without any justification or anything in the real world suggesting that it was going to be okay. In fact, everything was saying it wasn't. And just trying to hold on, connect with that part. And so I, I think there's a part inside of me that knows that I'm going to be okay. And, you know, staying with this not taking that for granted not being um what do you call it frivolous or cavalier about that part but having a lot of reverence for it you know and just going okay i'm gonna be okay is uh is one way that money loves me and shows that yeah even when it doesn't appear like it's there it still is there mm, yeah and that yeah that came at that rock bottom it's like you know, as as um, who was the author of uh, J.K. Rowling, the the author of um, all the Harry Potter books? She just said, you know, rock bottom was the firm foundation on which I built the rest of my life, yeah. and I think that was one of those experiences. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Something I came across like thinking about money yesterday was that why do women have such a thing with money and men don't like with success with money but you know the um the the um there's I, the sentence I would challenge that, that Svenja I would challenge I would challenge that a lot but go on challenge it after I finish please um when women apply for a job and they think I only fit 90 percent for that job they're not going to apply, right? Because they think I need to learn something. I need to become better in something. I need to improve something. I need to learn something. I'm not going to apply because I, I'm not suitable for the job because 10% I'm missing. If a guy's like 60% suitable, then that's fine. He's going to apply and he's going to get the job because he's just going to show up and say, I'm, I'm good. Like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way to do it. He's not going to, he's going to think that and say, I'm perfect for the job. So that's, if, if I put this on money, then it's like <laughs> this, this insecurity of women um, because money has this um, character of um, showing up for you or doesn't. 
somebody who supports you, something that supports you, or doesn't. Like if you have if you have the default mode of I need to do it myself, I need to take care of myself, don't rely on anybody, strong independent woman, then you're gonna right. make money not show up for you. And that's like as the masculine energy is so much of the supporting, holding, showing up in the healthy way, right? I think right. men, men do have the tendency to find a better way or to to take it as like this is normal for me. It's normal for me to. I don't know so many guys that are broke or have huge problems with that. So that's just something that came across my mind. But I think with us women, it's a thing like to treat money, to make money abandon you. If you have anxious attachment style you're going to make money abandon you. Like you're going to, you're going to uh, be hurt by money repeatedly. You're going to find out that you can't rely on it, that you can't control it, that it's going to do what it wants because it needs its freedom. You know, it's just out of your control. That's like, yeah, that's what I'm putting on money. And th th this has been my journey. Like I've always been five figured, but in the red numbers, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, trading six figures in the red. It makes life really oh, interesting. Oh my god! Uh, I, I don't recommend. I don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> so that's so it's a very it's a very multi multi pronged uh, question there with a lot of assumptions as well. But I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll unpack it and answer it as best I can. First I'm of all, I'm making up theories. Just... <laughs> I'm making up theories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and I love it. I love it. First of all, I'd say yeah. There's the there's the sense of like. Can I? Well, first of all, as as a man, I'll share with you a, a realization I had around money. In that, <laughs> men, it's a, when we when we reach the point of understanding that we can provide, it's tremendously how do I say it? Masculinizing. It's it's like it feels fucking good. I remember when I when I started to earn my first six figure paycheck, and I'm like, you know what? If I woke up tomorrow with a wife and a couple of kids, I can provide for them. And I oh. really like that, you know. And so whether I have the wife and kids or not, I, I want that feeling because it, it boosts my testosterone. It makes me feel competent. It makes me feel like a man in the, in the world. To, and, and I think the current teachings around money in, in women's circles are like you, instead of going out and earning it, because I've literally gone and dug rocks in the middle of the desert for, for money. And I've gone and like, well, I have my two hands and I have my strength and I'm going to go and I can physically go out and earn money. Um, and that's important to me. Uh, and I'm going to push through any of the uncomfortable feelings or the pain in order to do that. Okay. And that was kind of my life for a very long time. Uh, I think the current teachings, correct me if I'm wrong, around money in, in women's business and, and the rising feminine are you can magnetize money. You can, if you're in your flow, you can draw it into you. There's less of this, you know, you don't have to be in your masculine and go out and force things to happen or go and make it happen when you can be in your flow uh, and magnetize it to you. And I think that there is, there needs to be room for both because money is money is one of these things that just brings up your stuff, right? Very, yeah. When you've got a lot of it, um, the first challenge is to make money. Okay. The, the second challenge is to keep it. Okay. <laughs> Where once you've made money, right. This, you got more problems. You just got different with this. Robert Kiyosaki says, you know, you're still going to have problems whether you have money or not. He just, I prefer to get to my problems in the back of a Rolls Royce. Okay. <laughs> problems do not go away. No. Um, but the first thing is, and then here's another thing that, that is important to notice. Don't, D don't a, set your sights at getting out of survival mode or poverty mm. set your sights on creating something bigger than you can imagine okay because the reason is once you're out of survival mode whatever number that is let's say you know you know, i want 10 grand in the bank once you get 10 grand in the bank your whole dopamine system and your whole desire to grow just drops away and you start relaxing Okay. And then you don't bother making any more money until the bank account drops below that, 
that, you know, $2,000 in the account. And then it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> All the adrenals and cortisol starts coming on. You get stressed, but something fires up here. And then you generally go back to your patterns in the past of making money and go and doing it again. Yeah. If you say, look, I want a hundred grand because I want to help children in Nepal learn to read and, and um, get fresh water for, for Cambodian school kids, you get to the 10 grand, you go, okay, I know how to make 10 grand. Now I need to learn how to make a hundred grand and to open myself up to that skill set. And then you've kind of earned the right to manage a hundred grand. And then you do the steps to earn a million. So it, the challenge is if you manifest a hundred grand, it's like the studies they do on lottery, lottery winners um, within a year, 80% of them go back to where they fucking started because this isn't up to speed so sometimes in some cases oh. the worst thing you can do is manifest money because you haven't earned the right to play at that level yet exactly exactly the point of is your stop touching my laptop please oh, i have my dog <laughs> on here and he's like okay cuddle time and i'm like no um <laughs> can your body hold this amount of energy because it's it's fucking trauma right if there's so much money in your bank account your your nervous system just goes boom i don't know what to do like i don't have intelligence what if it's all gonna leave me again which is my thing right i made a i i think i made a hundred k income by august this year so and it's not in my account right 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 okay yeah, yeah. so um can you hold this much energy in your body and i definitely can't it's like i can't hold this much energy like i'm i'm um how do oh, you yes. say? Uh, immune compromised so that means like my body anyways with energy has a problem of holding it because it's suppressed it's something's holding me small so i don't explode that's what's happening and the same of course this blueprint is on money as well so I'm not able to hold this much money in my field. It doesn't, I can't, I, something is making me, or let's say it, it's not that I can't, but I haven't found a way yet. So something is making me get rid of money, of love, of energy. And that's like, that's my thing. That's my passion. And as you say, realizing it's there doesn't mean it's going to change right away, but you you catch yourself and yeah you're going to do something different and mm -hmm. that's like that's like the journey so like if you want to have a 90k launch are you able to hold this much money in your system and for most people they directly go actually no i don't I, I, I don't even know what to do with it i don't know how to treat it i don't know how to show my mm -hmm. love to it i don't know how to be surrounded by this much abundance because people come out of so much lack, like lack of love mostly, but that's the blueprint for everything, right? So, oh yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's so much, just so much to, to unpack in that, in those things as well. Firstly, I think like with your immune compromised uh, state and the correlation with money, it's like, yeah, you have so much energy that is there, you know, that, you know, you are creating these things. You are creating that health. You're here, you're vibrant, you're doing stuff. Honestly, Sven, you're doing stuff which people aspire to, you know, I'm sure like you're a massive role model to lots and lots of people, um, immune compromised or not. And then, and you are generating these, these fabulous amounts of energy and money. Okay. And then, you know, Rumi says, your task is not to search for love, you know, money, you are magnetizing money your your task is merely to remove the barriers in its way and i think that's where your task is is just to kind of be removing those barriers so that it collects so that the health collects and then you receive that and then in terms of the energy around um, there was this great question that i think john saint john of god he's like the 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 faith healer in brazil used to ask people when they would come to him and they were sick and trembling and wanting to be healed. And he would say to them, what, 
would God have you do if I healed you? Okay. Which is just oh. this mind blowing question of like, okay, well, uh, you know, it's like, well, then I would have no excuse or then I would have to do the thing that I've been telling myself I want to. And, and that can be so scary that we want to stay where we are. And again, it comes, it can come all the way back to this desire for all attachment versus authenticity. If yeah. you make a million, if you make a million dollars, that's going to be probably a million dollars more than most of your friends, which means suddenly you're going to be different. You might be rejected. You might be ostracized. Um, and that's part of holding that amount of money is, is being around people who are comfortable talking in those kind of amounts or greater so that you're, you're surrounded by this community of people who are like, yeah, you can do that. And we're going to love you. We're going to love you where you are. And we're going to love you on the journey. And we're going to love you when you get there. Yeah. And we'll even love you, if you read Ryan Holiday's books, on the way down if you start to lose that. Because, the, as I said, it's one thing to make a lot of money. It's another thing to keep it. And then there's a third leg, which no one talks about, which is, you know, you the descent, the descent back into the shadow. Yeah. And yeah. when I when I went bankrupt for the first time, I did a I chatted to a lot of my successful friends, okay, and I scratched the surface beneath all of these bright shiny faces, and I found out that a a lot of them had gone bankrupt in the past, and b a lot of them weren't actually as successful as they made out to be, yeah. um, and it just helped me dissolve the the bright shiny exterior and go you know what russ you're doing really good you're doing really good exactly where you are and that is a foundation that sense of i am doing really good exactly where i am is the foundation upon which you can ratchet up and keep the money that you make yeah. without it kind of dissolving into your shadows or something else and i've had to learn that the really hard way yeah, but that lands, right? I've never been mm. someone to somebody tells me something and I do it. I have to have something hit my head and I can't do it the way I used to. And it's it's a massive thing for me. I think I started like two years ago, I thought it would be awesome to have like 300 euros more a month. <laughs> right, isn't yeah. that beautiful? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Like, And it's like 30,000 now. And it's like, how did what happen and that's what i mean by trauma and what you said about the friends and this no i want to go into the secondary benefit of sickness absolutely my sickness opened um my uh the love uh, from my mother for me so she realized i got my love back that i was fighting for decades and the ones of my brother as well and they all so that's my secondary benefit it even goes so far that something in my head is saying you're not taking my sickness from me it makes me who I am. Like people are listening to me because I have a story to tell and you can't take that away from me. So that's why I usually don't talk about it anymore at all because I don't want to identify through the person that has this sickness um, because I'm never going to get rid of it as long as I benefit from it. So yeah, that's absolutely a thing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. I, yeah, I hear you. I would, I would also offer and also offer this to anyone else who's kind of going down this line of inquiry of like, well, oh, here's a thing. I've recognized it. I've, I see how I benefit from it in a negative, you know, in, in, I'm enabling it. And now I'm going to try and starve it of oxygen, if you like. And, and so here's something that I would offer from my, from my practice is making witnessing and allowing it to be there and recognizing that and finding the wisdom beneath it oh. and then and then the practice becomes because this part as you said all shadows are born from love when we find the positive oh intention <laughs> i'm special and different not mine when we find the positive intention behind these parts and we dialogue with them and this is what i do with people we then ask the question, is there a different way that you can satisfy that positive intention, which doesn't involve making me sick to get love? Okay, because let's say that this part wants you to be loved. 
we connect it with your higher self and they have a conversation about all the different ways that you can receive love, Svenja, without needing to be sick. And that conversation can happen consciously or it can happen in the background in your body over time. And then you'll notice behavioral change. You'll notice yourself thinking and doing things differently. And, and that's, that's exactly the um, mm. And I love how I always make people coach me for free in my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully this is useful for, for everyone else listening as well. Like this is a, this is a, a practice which I can which I can give you. So thank you, Svenja, for, for offering that. And I'm going to turn this into a teaching piece for everyone listening that here's the practice, right? The thing that you struggle with, can you ask that question? Can you ask, first of all, first of all, you welcome that in and you say to that part, thank you for feeling safe enough to reveal yourself. You're welcome as you are and you don't need to be different or to change at all. And then you welcome that part and you get curious. What does it look like in my mind? If I listen carefully, can I hear anything? What does it feel like in my body? And you welcome that in. And then you can ask it the question, how are you here to help me? What do you want? How are you here to help me? And it will give you an answer. And keep repeating that question. Okay, so if I had that what would we do then? Or how will that help me? And it will give you an answer. And then you can say again, how will having that help me? And at, you know, three to seven levels down, you'll get an answer, which will either repeat, or you won't, it won't have any words. And at that point, you know, you're at the foundation. And then you can ask your higher self to come in and say, what are all the different ways that usually it's safety? What are all the ways that we can keep you safe instead of this particular pattern, instead of avoiding men? Or what are all the ways that you can be loved, um, which we can discover, which don't involve you being sick? And that conversation where you'll feel the liberation in your body, you'll feel the change in your nervous system as something at the very core of you shifts and that energy will start to liberate itself. And, and that's the practice. And you don't want to do it on your own. You want to do it with him because seriously, um, I've never had, and I rarely say that, I've never had anyone where I felt like, let's say 80%, 80% safe mm. that mm. he would hold all the pain that's coming up from the darkness in me. And that was such, such a beautiful experience for me to work with you and being able to show up in this messy way, not having to say, I've got it all. You don't, you know, that's what we do, right? We enter a mastermind full of coaches saying, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't, I have my shit in order. I don't need anything. Like I paid eight, eight grand for this, but I don't actually, I'm just here for fun. You know, that's, that's what we do. If you're a coach, there's nothing better than to have a safety net and a safe space for you to show up in your messiness and being yeah. held and being guided in such a loving way. I've, yeah, this was very special for me. I mean, you know it, so thank you so much. And I mean, if you, you do you. offer free sessions to get to know you, right? That's right. There's a couple of spots in my calendar every week for people to jump in. So you're welcome to, and thank you. Thank you for those kind words. It's, it's beautiful. And, and I'm going to add that I was the worst at being able to do it myself, right? For years, I would, I would hear a process like that, which you can do by yourself. And I would like, right, I'm going to run with it. And I'm going to, I'm going to magically clean up everything. And I've been humbled so many times. And uh, after a particularly devastating breakup in 2015, I think where I just spent, spent two months, literally I'd, cr I'd wake up crying and I'd go to bed crying and I'd probably have a cry during the day. And, and the therapist that I was working with was doing what I'm doing for you, holding this space of just loving the shit out of me as all of these parts were revealing themselves and I was learning to just hold them and to love them. And this is, you know, the practice of self-love and also in full humbleness, why we need other people and why we need each other to help 
ourselves co-regulate to help ourselves and when you do it with someone who sees the greatness in you like i always see the light in you senya i always am focused on your greatness and gently teasing or bringing that out or revealing that back to you and that is what repairs trauma that is what that is what helps us learn to love ourselves that is what gives us the the impulse to return that gift to the people around us in the world because we've had the honor of receiving it from someone else yeah and that was a definitely definitely that was a first for me and that's quite mm. kind of sad <laughs> and when you just said like i uh, love the shit out, out of you i'm like oh my god i'm welling up i'm going to cry <laughs> um i cry a lot on my podcast so <laughs> people i uh, um because i yeah i only go into topics that i deep dive um yeah that's meaningful I'm going to put your Instagram into the show notes so people can just um you probably have uh, the link to your calendar in your link, link tree or in your right. yeah it's in my link tree yeah yeah oh, yeah you would be really I mean you're missing out if you're not doing it I can just yeah mm-hmm. only say that um I'm having my um I'm going to throw you out questions for you are you ready right I'm ready ready as I'll ever be If there'd be a song that was being played in the background whenever you enter a room, what what is that song? Oh, you know what? It's it's Energy by this amazing African uh African kind of singer. It's phenomenal. Um I think Imaya Imaya uh, got me onto this one. I'll we'll put a link in it. It rocks. Perfectly. I, I um I I uh, actually made a whole soundtrack out of this but out of this thing. The soundtrack, right. soundtrack of my life, <laughs> like all, all okay. the other questions. Okay, um, my second question, uh, and I have three in total. Uh, my second question huh? is, oh, I can hear myself through you. Is that? Oh, really? Do you have me open? That. Yeah, okay. Second question, um, DC or Marvel? DC or uh, Marvel? Thank God. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to publish this interview. <laughs> and there's, no, there, there's no right or wrong, but there's a wrong answer. Yeah. There's no right or wrong, but I may not publish you. Uh, <laughs> Marvel all the way. Good Lord. Seriously, that's a, that's a point. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that should be a first date question for anyone out there, by the way. It's in, it's in my Tinder profile, actually. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you know, red flags all over the place. If I uh, don't don't try and turn a red flag into a green one, by the way. <laughs> oh, we need to do another one of that. I love it. I love <laughs> I've it. got I've got loads of them. Oh my god, we'll do a whole another podcast on dating for sure. Awesome. But can I give you one tip about dating, which which I learned from a woman, and, and I I was speaking at a woman's um uh a whole one of my friends was running a you know call in your man magnetize your man kind of workshop and they called in a bunch of you know ask the men anything here's a bunch of cool men and i said to him anyone who's dating date them for at least two months if not three the reason being you want to see if you still like them through every phase of your cycle at least two times right and to also see how they respond when you're doing your winter your spring your summer etc super important to kind of factor that in as well as you know taking it slow is like the best dating advice ever period full stop but at least two months before you kind of like make any decisions going forward preferably three to to also get out of these like um these brain states you're not yourself in the, you're not yourself exactly. you're an addict basically so right. you won't have <laughs> At a certain point in your cycle, anything with two feet and a heartbeat will do. At another stage, you know, every man is wrong and don't touch me, stay away kind of thing. And you want to you both be able to reveal that to your potential partner and see how they, how they receive that so that you can, be, you can be both authentic, which is the first part of being human, and then be safely attached, which is the second. So these parts don't come into conflict that is then a good basis for secure attachment which is you know a whole other podcast on on attachment theory and how to navigate a, a securely attached relationship ah. and date as well 
We need mm. to do one on dating. I love it because yeah. you know these theories are, sure. great, are great, but exactly but always ask me how do you do that pra- like how does dating look for you like they want practical advice and i have a whole lot of things and we, we should definitely do that but 100%, son- i'm all about practical all right third question yeah hit me with it when you would do it again yes um if there was something happening to the world and everything you ever said wrote or yeah stated had been deleted and you have this one chance now i'm giving you a paper and you have this one chance of writing max three sentences max three sentences max and the school system has changed so every kid in the world is gonna read those three sentences as like um, a new history of mankind what do you want the world to know (laughs) oh my god all right all right three three statements listen more with the first one second one will be meditate now and the third one would be be kind, especially to yourself. Oh, <laughs> ah, that's why I don't send out my 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 uh, questions before. I love it. Yeah, it's so true and yeah. authentic if you just feel into it. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. Thank you so much for like your your humor, for your uh, your knowledge. That's very impressive. Um, yeah. yeah, this was a blast. We got to do it again for sure. Yeah, it was so much fun. Thank you so 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 much. I'm gonna. I think I tagged you. No, I'm going to tag you and um, your Instagram and people just go to him and follow him. I mean, all of the memes yeah. I steal are like 60% of him. So That's me. Yeah. yeah, I want to I want to tell you I take spirituality very, very seriously. And at the same time, I don't take it seriously at all. There will be I'm always poking fun at sacred cows, especially my own. And um, yeah, my Instagram is hypno.with.russ, hypno with Russ. Find me, connect with me, ask me questions, jump in and grab a session if there's one available or just, you know, just engage. Um, more than happy to hear from you. And it's been an absolute pleasure, Svenja. And, you know, best of luck to all the beautiful people that you're you're building in your tribe and, and gathering around you because, you know, there is such such beautiful wisdom that comes through you so clearly. And, um, yeah, you're, you're a gift. Thank you so much. Mm. Ah, I'm receiving that. You know the, the 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 default mode. Yeah, you you too. You're a gift too. It's like ugh, I'm not taking, it. I'm not receiving it. I'm giving it back. I'm receiving that. I'm landing. Thank you so much. Um, what time is it in Bali? It is ten past six at the moment ah. in the evening. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you have a great evening, everybody on yeah. my continent. Have a great day. We're just starting into it, and yeah. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I want to see you again here. That's that's going to be yep. so much. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do one on dating and sex and all the good stuff. Yay! All right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. See you, Svenja. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. Cool. Ciao.